What's up, Internet? Coach Dennis here. All right, so is Tanner correct? Is CrossFit just exercise? Is it not training? Today we're going to answer that in the Ultimate Performance Masterclass. Now, a few comments before we get into the good nitty gritty. And if you are a CrossFitter, if you're a hybrid athlete, if you're preparing for military, if you're anybody who's interested in performance, stick around for this talk. Um, if you're only here for physique, I think I'm going to touch on that, but that's possibly a separate talk. I recently did a poll on my Instagram for my followers and asked, are you more interested in physique or performance? And it was sort of a split decision, a little bit leaning more towards performance, 60-40 split. So today's gonna to be the ultimate performance masterclass. But really, if you're training for physique, there's gonna be some performance benefits anyway. So this is for everybody. Now, the thing about Tanner, so I actually went and listened to his debate against, uh, I almost called him Tanner, um, Taylor Self. So Tanner, this is ex-crossfitter, now pushing strength training as the godsend to the world, the solution for the world's most vexing problem, perhaps. And he debated Taylor Self, who's a CrossFit purist. And honestly, I didn't feel either of them really did a good job of making the case for their side of it, where Taylor's saying CrossFit is the ultimate, you know, uh, training methodology and Tanner saying forget that garbage you just got to focus on strength and just learn how to do strength progressions and that's going to get you everything you want in terms of performance and physique now the reason Tanner is saying that to be honest is because he thinks you're dumb okay and I don't mean that like he's he's wrong and he's lying and he thinks he can get away with a lie but he's got, I've seen this before, I've done it myself in the past, right? You assume the audience can only take in so much information and if you could just give them one simple piece of advice, what would it be to get them moving in the right direction? So his thing is just get strong, right? And that's good, but I think you guys are smarter than that. And I think that today I could set anybody up with three simple concepts to structure your own training and develop your whatever your athletic goal might be, whether it be CrossFit, whether it be a sport in particular, even endurance sports. So let's get into that a little bit. Now, let, so let's use, uh, let's use a framework, okay? Let's back up even. So Tanner did say one thing that's right. Training is purposeful structure to an, to an outcome. Um, and I agree with that. So what is CrossFit's intent? What's their outcome? Let's kind of steel man both sides of the argument. CrossFit's intended outcome is work capacity across broad time and modal domains. Meaning you can go fast in a, a lot of a large variety of movements um, and we can sort of race that right They're, they put fitness on a clock so if we want to do squat and running and pull-ups crossfitters are gonna be able to do all those things together the fastest and honestly I do think crossfits probably the best way to train for that intended outcome and then you take Tanner's argument and he's just saying just get stronger right and so if you're training CrossFit, you're probably not gonna see your back squat going up week after week after week. There's probably a smarter way to structure that. But what if you wanted the best of both worlds and what if you wanted to, that to translate into other outcomes? What if you're in the military or getting ready for the military and you have to do X amount of push-ups to pass your PT test? Is CrossFit gonna guarantee you that you're gonna do more push-ups? Is strength training going to guarantee you that you're going to do more push-ups? The answer is neither. Neither are going to guarantee that. And this is where maybe Tanner is correct. You have to train specifically for the outcome that you want. 
And you can do that within either structure, with, within a strength training structure or even a, a hypertrophy structure, or you could do that within a CrossFit setting with just some simple understanding of what I guess classically would be called the energy pathways, but I want to really simplify that down. I don't want to say dumb that down, but honestly, like just make it more usable and practical because when we talk about the phosphocreatine pathway, the glycolytic pathway, it, it's like, it's not useful, right? So let's make it useful. So let's take the example of somebody who needs to improve their push-ups. Like how would how would I do that, right? If I had to go in back into basic training next week and I had to be able to do 70 consecutive push-ups, what would that training structure look like? So the way I think about training is three different outcomes. Or three different stim maybe stimulus you want to call it. Three different uh training structures that you want to improve on. So you want to improve your power, okay? Which could be synonymous with strength. If you want to get nitty gritty with it, there's a slight difference between strength and power. Uh, strength just being absolute force output, power being more of an expression of speed of strength. But the reality is, is like, if you're powerful, you're strong. So like, just put the two under the same umbrella. Best example would be like an Olympic weightlifter. They're sort of the gold standard for power, right? They can move a barbell very fast, but guess what? They're also super strong. So if you develop power, you develop strength. So power, you have endurance, which would be a classic example would be able, the ability to run a marathon, but you can have endurance in movements as well so like going back to the power lifters olympic lifters you need some endurance in your squat and if you're a crossfitter you really need some endurance in your squat and then capacity and that's the ability to work both of those things power and endurance at a high intensity and that's the ultimate outcome for crossfit is that work capacity but if we're talking about the push-up for instance you may have the power, so you may have the ability to maybe bench press 225, but you don't have the endurance to hit a set of 70 push-ups just because you get tired at rep 25, because you only maybe you only train in the three to five rep range. Um, conversely, you could have endurance, maybe you're a swimmer and your upper body has great endurance, but it lacks the power and explosiveness um, to to be able to do again 70 push-ups because two push-ups for you is like two max rep push-ups even though you have a lot of endurance fibers you don't have that power putting the two together would, would lead you to capacity so how would i structure training let's talk about push-ups again we're talking about push-ups we can we'll parlay this into many other things but push-ups so here are the three um, training sessions I would do if I was gonna get better at push-ups. So when we're talking about developing power, you're gonna wanna do explosive repeats. So this is something on a one, basically an EMOM. So you're gonna be on a 10 second work interval and a 50 second rest interval. So it's a one to five work to rest ratio. And if we're doing push-ups, Basically, you're gonna do 10 seconds of plyometric push-ups or just explosive as fast as you can push-ups. And you're gonna rest for 50 seconds. So see what that would look like. So something like this. So set a clock, three, two, one, go, 10 seconds. I don't know if that was 10 seconds, I did 10. I'm assuming it was about one push-up per second. This is particularly important. Speed of rep, okay? Uh, when I went to the NSCA conference two years ago, um, there was a PhD there, a doctor there who's studying CrossFit, and his whole thesis was, 
if there's any one thing, any one metric you'd want to improve on to be a better CrossFitter, it's speed of rep, um, or maybe you call it movement efficiency. But you take two guys who have the same strength, the same endurance, but one guy can just move reps faster, he's gonna win the race. And in push-ups, like when I was in the Air Force, it's a one minute test. So you would have to do, uh, to get 100%, I think for me it was 67 push-ups in one minute. Now I could do 100 push-ups, but not at that speed, right? Without training. So, cause you think about it, that's, 60 seconds to do 67 push-ups, you have to average one push-up in less than a second, slightly less than a second. And I've got these long arms, I'm a tall guy. So for me, I really, you really have to work on that speed. So these um, repeats, they train the, the elasticity, by the way, like there's several factors we have to think about in training. So there's tissue adaptation. It's not just muscle, it's tendon. Um, and then there's the metabolic capacity. So there's, you know, your, your cardiac ability, your respiratory ability, and your cellular ability to take those nutrients and do something with it or take those sub, uh, substrates. So the explosive power repeats are going to train the tendon, the elasticity of the joint, they're gonna train high power, they're gonna train speed. Um, and that's, it's very, it's fairly simple. That's what you would do, 10, 10 seconds of work, 50 seconds of rest. Um, and you could, to, to progress that, you could make them more ply, you could turn them into clapping push-ups. Um, in time, you could theoretically stretch that out to like 15 seconds of work, 20 seconds of work, um, but, you're, you're going for the best quality of movement. So you, you would want to stop the second a rep slowed down. Okay, you we want to just train that quick, fast, elastic uh, fiber work, work output. Okay, um, and you can apply that to pull-ups. You can apply that to barbell work. You can even apply that to monostructural work. So you could do um, you know, sprints where it's just 10 second sprint. Okay. It's all going to, it's all going to transfer to your ultimate goal, right? If you're doing 10 second sprints, you're going to be high power. They're going to train that Achilles tendon elasticity. They're going to train, um, your ability to exert force the, the length of your stride. That's going to transfer over to your long distance running. Okay. But obviously if you're only doing these fast twitch sets, it's not going to guarantee you that you can get to 70 push-ups in one minute. So you're also going to want to train the endurance aspect. So what would an endurance session look like? What I would do, um, I, I call it continuous rest pause. So what I would do is I'd set a two minute clock, might as well go longer. You could start with the one minute if you only have to do one minute of push-ups, but you can go longer than that and you're essentially going to hold a straight up uh, straight arm push-up plank and intersplice occasionally a push-up so maybe every 20 seconds to start out um, and just holding that plank every 20 seconds hit one push-up a progression would be then to do one every 15 seconds, one every 10 seconds, one every five, down until you're doing two minutes straight of push-ups, not necessarily at that explosive speed, but you're able to build that endurance at that speed. So it'll look like something like this. So set the clock, <clears throat> you're holding, just holding. Why this? Because most people don't fail the push-up because their arms give out. A lot of them fail because of that core strength, the ability to hold the plank in general, uh, the ability to get comfortable breathing here for their heart, you know, um, to pump while they're really squeezing their abs and all that. Hit a push up and hold. Okay. My arms are still under load. 
I'm building endurance, okay? I'm already starting to shake. This feeling is what gets people to quit. It's not necessarily, necessarily their ability to push out one more rep, but they just feel this fatigue and mentally they give out, okay? So you train this completely different than that fast switch. And eventually you're gonna meet in the middle where you're able to do this, you have that core strength to have endurance, and you can make it for the one minute or two minute that you need to. You're gonna train those two things separately and eventually have them converge in the middle. Now, another way, or the third way, would be more CrossFit style, would be what I call continuous mixed modal. So, um, you know, CrossFit will take two or three exercises and sort of cycle them all together. So that way you're working each one under fatigue. Push-ups, I think some, a great one would be something like get on the Airdyne bike. Um, and maybe you go hard for 30 seconds, hop down, bust out 10 push-ups. Get back on, recover for 20 seconds, whatever. Another 30 seconds on the Airdyne bike, 10 push-ups. But you're making now you're doing your push-ups under fatigue. I don't have exact um, workouts thought thought out right now on this, but you know, look at any kind of classic CrossFit workout where push-ups are a part of it, and that would be a good way to do it. Because, you know, in, especially in the military, there's not just like the PT test, but if you're gonna do something like go through BUDS or some kind of selection for special forces, you're gonna be asked to do a lot of push-ups, and it's not always gonna be fresh and it's not always gonna be like, all right, now it's time for push-ups. No, you're gonna be swimming, you know, maybe they're gonna have you swimming laps or swimming in the ocean, and then all of a sudden you gotta get on your face and hit push-ups, or you're carrying logs, and all of a sudden you gotta get on your face and Hit push-ups. Even in basic training, constantly the TIs was get on your face, right? And it's like you're not ready for it. You're, you maybe you're in the middle of doing something else. So you want to train that ability to do push-ups under fatigue. And there is more of a science to that. So capacity threshold training is all about substrate utilization. So the ability to get oxygen and glycogen and lactate to the muscles in a productive way. So you need to build up, or you need to get some of those substrates going and then do the work you want. And that's why CrossFit is powerful. So CrossFit definitely has a place. To answer my question, CrossFit is training. And what, what are we even saying when we're saying CrossFit? Because if, if you have a good CrossFit program, all these elements are going to be here. They're going to have strength progressions. They're going to have intervals. They're going to have threshold training. But when people are arguing about CrossFit, they're always arguing about essentially the hopper model, right? Um, or the, the Metcon. Is the Metcon useful? What, so what is that to maybe the uninitiated? It's when you take two, three, or more movements, and you just say, get all these movements done, as fast as possible in this chunk of time. Usually it's like a 10 minute chunk of time. And it could be the first time you've done these movements in that particular arrangement, right? So it's not like a progression where it's like, oh, well last week I did this arrangement and here's what I did. Now here's week two. Let's see how we can improve on that arrangement. It's like always a new arrangement of workouts or exercises. So you don't really know what to expect. And you just kind of go into it, you get your heart rate up, you're under fatigue, and you just see what you can do. There's definitely a use for that. And basically what it's training is um, essentially VO2 max, or what would be called threshold training. Your body's, or maybe lactic training, some people call it, your body's ability to work under that high lactic state right at the threshold of failure essentially right so like a cardio a cardio effort would be below that threshold where you can sustain the movement for 
significantly long time, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, hour. But with CrossFit, you're trying to push right up to that threshold where failure is imminent, but you can still move. So you're just right below that threshold, okay? We'll touch on that a little bit more. Um, but there's a, use, there's a use case there for the push-ups. So, you know, if you want to do that, if you want to train your push-up, I would do one of these at least once a week, if not each of them twice a week, okay? And you could theoretically do these two, the power and endurance, on the same day. In fact, when, you know, I'm doing the Coaching Cotter series right now, training my buddy Cotter, and we utilize both on the same day. It just depends on, it's a time management thing at the end of the day. If you've got a lot of time, push-ups are your main priority. I would split them up on different days so that way you just have something new and interesting to do each day. So you could do Monday explosive repeats, Tuesday rest pause, uh, Wednesday a capacity workout or mixed, continuous mixed modal, then just cycle back through that, right? Maybe take a rest day in there, it's fine. And just continue continue cycling that um cotter who i'm training he has a hypertrophy goal and that's it just build muscle now the beauty of a hypertrophy goal or a physique goal is that it's very simple you almost don't need to worry about any of this 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 might be there but it's kind of a byproduct if you want to grow your muscle all you have to do is take each muscle group or just the muscles that you care about to near failure under a moderate to heavy load once or twice a week like that it's pretty simple right like if you want your arms to grow you do a bicep curl right and you come to near failure ah, i can't do another rep like okay do that once or twice a week your arms are going to grow but and then you have to have progressive overload so the thing that gets me to failing right here on Monday, uh, maybe 95 pounds. When you do it again next Monday, it's got to be 100 pounds. It doesn't have to be, but like over time, you should see that progression happening. If you're able to, and this is where T Tanner's kind of right with strength, because it, if you have that strength model in your mind, doing more of the same thing, expressing more force output you will grow simple as that right hypertrophy like the bodybuilding world's all into the ultimate stretch of the muscle right now that's all fine but really like it doesn't need to be that complicated if possible take the reps through a full range of motion you know so it's not always possible right like thankfully lately i've found a talking about squat, I've found a squat variation where I can actually take it, take it through a full range of motion. So I'll, I'm using the wedge. I don't have it here, but I'll pretend as if I do where my heels are up and we're going through the deepest range of motion. Usually I have a barbell on my back and coming up. Previously, I was struggling with that with my feet flat on the ground because of some hip issues, but that heel elevation kind of uh, unlocked that hip for me and it's letting me get through. So if possible, go through the fullest range of motion, hit failure. But like, if I couldn't, if I really just couldn't because of pain or whatever, you could still get near failure at quarter squat, half squat, whatever. You're still gonna grow just from load, okay? So how Cotter and I are doing that is still within this model still within this model when we squat on tuesdays we do essentially see he doesn't know this but we're essentially doing explosive repeats so we build to a heavy three okay so like when you're building to a heavy three you're not wait unless you're a power lifter you're not waiting five ten minutes between sets you hit a set of three, probably takes about 10 seconds. You load the bar with your next weight, you shake it out and you do it again. Maybe this extends out a little bit beyond 50 seconds, but that's okay. This is just an example, guys. 
but you're doing it within the next one to two minutes, okay? That's still an explosive repeat. It's still a power building exercise doing sets of three. So each week we do, we build to a heavy set of three. We're getting that explosive repeat exposure and we're utilizing progressive overload because our aim is to have that top set be heavier than the prior week, okay? So we're growing and whether Cotter knows it or not, he's going to improve his performance, at least in this power metric with squatting. And we do the same thing with bench, okay? But we also use the continuous rest pause because after we build to our heavy set of three with squat and with bench, we always do a drop set of 20, okay? And that method is also continuous rest pause. So unlike the push-up, what a continuous rest pause would look like with squats would be was classically known as breathing squats. Usually it's a set of 20, but it could be it could be more. It could be a set of 30. I've seen people do sets of 100. And what you're going to do is you're going to start squatting. You lower than that. It's just a demo. You start squatting with a decently heavy weight. I think like a good target for people would be body weight. If you could do a set of 20 with your body weight on the bar, you're pretty fit, you're pretty strong. People can do much more. I've seen people do um, body weight plus for 100 reps, okay? But um, just to, again, go back to what, what continuous rest pause would look like, usually about the 10th rep, you're realizing this is a cardiovascular event more than anything. So what happens is you're here, you're catching your breath, Next rep, it's called breathing squats, but you're gonna get to that 20. If 20 is your goal, you're gonna get to that 20. That could take anywhere from two to five minutes. I've done, I think the heaviest set of 20 I did was maybe 250, 275. Um, and I went back and watched that set. It took me five minutes, okay? So I've done the same thing with push-ups. I, I have these videos somewhere, I'll find them. I did a set of 100 when I wasn't training push-ups a lot. Um, and I used a, a rest pause where I actually allowed myself to push my butt up. But I never, I was always in a plank of sorts. That set of 100 took me five minutes, okay? So that, it's training that endurance, that rest pause. We do that, we do that with squats. We do that with bench press, Cotter and I. And you can apply that to whatever goal you have, okay? So you should be working that top end power with um, short bursts, you know, usually three, depending on the movement, three to 10 reps. If it's something like calisthenics, you can usually get 10 reps done in 10 seconds. Um, if it's something strength-based, like a barbell, it's usually more like three to five reps with at least a one to five work rest ratio and then that endurance you're just under tension for two minutes five minutes whatever it is all right um it's just about to go somewhere with that but i forgot oh another movement i love for this power base i have a lot of people do is kettlebell swings kettlebell swings or kettlebell snatches so pavel pavel satsuline has literally a whole book and a whole course you could take about this exact training structure it's called kettlebell x and uh you would do uh anywhere from four to six explosive swings or snatches it takes eight to ten seconds and you rest and you would progress that that kettlebell load okay you're gonna get strong when i was doing that it made all the kettlebells feel so light I mean, I started, I was, got to the point where I was snatching 70 pounds. If that's the heaviest one we have. If we had 90, I think I could have done it. 70 pounds, four times every minute. And then when I would come to a CrossFit class and have to pick up the 50, it felt so freaking light, so light. Uh, but then I stopped doing that, and now 50 kind of feels heavy again, right? So this power, it, it works. It's real. Train that power. Now, Tanner might argue... The power in and of itself 
will increase your endurance. I think there's some truth to that, right? If I'm training my heavy snatch four reps per minute, and I get to the point where 50 feels lighter, that feeling alone will help with endurance. Um, but it makes way more sense to train both things together. You're gonna get the best results possible. Like, I, it's, I hope somebody watching this is training for the military, is trying to get their push-ups up. Do these two things, and I guarantee you, you're gonna hit your push-up goal. These two I would prioritize over the mixed modal. The mixed modal, I think, would be better spliced in one day a week. So I know I said everything two days a week, but yeah, you know, there's only seven days in a week. So uh, if you do each of these twice, that's four sessions. Um, if you're taking a rest day, right, there's your fifth day. You could do this once or twice a week, at least once. Um, definitely no more than twice. Cool? All right, so how would this lastly apply to monostructural, so running, um, cycling, whatever. Basically exactly the same with minus these two, okay? So <clears throat> 10 second sprints, 50 second rest, that works great running, cycling, whatever it is. You could get on the echo bike, um, assault bike, whatever, um, any kind of erg, rip it for 10 seconds, rest for 50, repeat. But when it comes to monostructural running, rowing, biking, whatever it is, you're gonna to wanna to implement a much longer time frame than this two to five minutes. So the big difference here is muscular endurance versus cardiovascular endurance. When we're talking about push-ups, pull-ups, squats, whatever it is, we're training the local musculature to have better endurance, okay? That's two to five minute range. But when we're talking about uh, monostructural, even like even though running's mostly legs, it's full body um, and it's more of a cardiac thing. We gotta train long, okay? Starting out, maybe if you're brand new, 30 minutes, but I mean, this could be two hours even, three hours even, okay? Depending on what your goals are. So um, that Z2, zone two, usually it's a heart rate, something like um, 180 minus your age. Usually the talk test is the best way. You should be able to kind of go out and have a, have a conversation the whole time, All right? Like break a sweat, but have a conversation. I think that's a nice happy medium because I've come in, you know, in here in camo and got on the echo bike <clears throat> and had a conversation with coach Andy um, and not broken a sweat. That's probably not zone two, it's probably zone one. But also come in and get to the point where I'm sweating but still having a conversation, that's zone two, okay? If you can't have a conversation anymore, you're beyond zone two. Okay, so you gotta do some zone two and then you have to do, well, you don't have to, <laughs> but if you're trying to peak for a competition or an outcome, you're gonna to wanna to do some threshold training. Okay, so if we're talking about running, we're talking about, and this, this applies to the mixed modal as well. We're talking about plus or minus four minutes of work up to plus or minus 10 minutes of work. And if you look at a CrossFit workout, that's usually what it is, right? It's, or what people are thinking of. It's usually like that seven to 12 minute, just freaking lung burner, okay? That is, threshold training with mixed modality. It's the same thing as running 800 meter repeats or 1200 meter repeats, right? So last week, a great example of threshold training, I did six by 1200 meter repeats. 1200 meters was taking me roughly five minutes, a little under. Doing that at a one-to-one -one work rest ratio. So big popular right now, for improving VO2 max, which is one of the arguable outcomes, maybe the top arguable outcome for capacity for threshold training is improving your VO2 max. I would say it's on a deeper level, it's all about 
substrate utilization, so the ability to um, utilize lactic acid, clear metabolites, and get nutrients to the muscles for productive force application. Um, that's going to happen by training at that threshold that we talked about. So um, the classic example everybody's talking about now is the four by four. Run four minutes as hard as you can, rest four minutes. Run four minutes as hard as you can, rest four minutes four times. And that's going to improve your VO2 max. It's a great way to do it. CrossFit, interestingly, CrossFit tends to often just do one. So it, it, like, if you're wondering how much of all this, CrossFit will usually just have that one 10 minute full bore threshold session and that's it. There's often not a rest and then a repeat, like Fran, right? People will do, that would be very much on the shorter end, but a lot of people know Fran. People don't often do Fran, rest four minutes, Fran again. They often just do Fran. So one, one hard effort is enough, okay? It's very possible. But as you get better, you, you should implement some intervals of that. So I did six by 1200 last week. For the explosive repeats, how many intervals should you do? Again, it's gonna be definitely be more than one. Um, I would say it's just something you're gonna build your capacity in. So you could start with three to five, build up to 10, 20, even 30. It, like, just kind of depends on how much time you have and how you're tracking your progress. That's probably a whole other video in and of itself. Um, the endurance, the continuous rest pause, I'm of the mind, again, it's really like one, it's probably enough. Okay, when, when we do 20 rep squats, we just do one set of that. It's pretty freaking taxing, that's enough. Um, if it's push up, something you can recover a little bit better from, you could do that two, three times, it's totally fine. But again, you ought to be tracking some performance metrics over the weeks and deciding if you need to do more volume or not. Different conversation. But these are the three training stimulus structures that if you grasp that, you grasp the interval and the, this, the intensity that you should be feeling out of each one, you could set up your own training program for any particular movement outcome and have great success, right? So you want to get better push-ups, pull-ups, once or twice a week, explosive repeats, once or twice a week, continuous rest pause, once or twice a week, continuous mixed modal. Um, do the same thing with a barbell. Example with barbell would be build to heavy three, maybe it takes you five sets to get there or maybe you just want to do five sets of three on a you know less than two minute clock then you're going to do your drop set of 20 breathing squats um, and then another day a week maybe you combine squats into some kind of mixed modal session whether it be wall balls on the lighter end thrusters on the middle end or maybe you even want to do something where you mix in some heavy squats totally fine monostructural do something like 10 second sprints on the echo bike, could be 10, 10 second sprints on the track. You're gonna have your uh, zone two long session, and then you're gonna have your threshold session, which if you're like me, triathlete, it should be um, just that monostructural. So, um, you know, running four by four or 800 meter repeats, 1200 meter repeats, even as low as 400 meter repeats, um, and occasionally doing a mixed, mo mixed modal where you're maybe intersplicing those 400s with pull-ups or something like that. But yeah, that's kind of how I think about training. Um, and I hope it's useful for you. It's kind of says that both people are right. CrossFit's right. Um, it's deeper than just being strong. But strength... You know, Tanner's right as well in terms of you really need to, you definitely need to focus on this power strength spectrum and you need to grasp the concept of progressive overload. And if you miss that progression and you miss out on the structure and you're not hitting each one of these each week, if you're 
only hitting this, these aren't necessarily gonna improve. If you're only hitting this, these aren't. See what I mean? So like an example of people only hitting one and as an avatar would be like power lifters, only hitting the power side of things, never working the rest pause, never working on their cardiovascular fitness. So if they were asked to do an endurance event, not that good at it. Endurance athletes, maybe only running, okay? Never working on power, never working on strength. Maybe gonna be a great runner, not gonna be very strong. And then on this end, CrossFitters, they're gonna be excellent at getting to a certain heart rate zone at that threshold and, and maintaining and staying there. And if they're already strong enough, then they're always going to seem like they're kicking your ass, right? So like, I, I definitely, when I'm not doing a lot of this, will come into CrossFit class and get my ass kicked because I'm, I just don't have that threshold capacity at the moment. But if you take somebody who is stronger than the average CrossFitter and you just get them implementing some capacity, even for a month or two, they're probably going to surpass them in pretty surpass the average person in pretty short order um, and then it kind of all works circularly because when you start getting bottlenecks here in capacity it's either because you lack the power or you lack the endurance two different ad adaptations so just work all three like just work all three it doesn't need to be that complicated uh, there's obviously all kinds of other um, performance aspects that strength coaches look at and it can get way deeper and people are going to say I missed this that and the other but like I think as a fundamental foundational thing just for the average person if they can say what's the purpose of today's workout is it power is it endurance or is it capacity understanding that power is short explosive efforts with decent amount of rest understanding that endurance is long uh, sort of monostructural efforts um, where you're just improving the muscu local muscular endurance and then capacity is this freaking basically full body high threshold cardio output if you, if you know to work all three of those things and you evenly distribute it, distribute your efforts towards that you're going to make progress okay so that's the foundation that's the basics I think a lot of people could figure out a structure that would make some sense um, but Maybe that'll be the video I make next on how to structure that. So that's all I got. All right, y'all. Peace.